Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to give a quick introduction to a variant of the second derivative test, which actually can be used if the second derivative test fails, or rather, if the second derivative test is inconclusive in certain circumstances. And uh, you can basically keep differentiating and till you get a non zero value derivative. So here's how it goes you have a function with a point in the domain, the first derivative is zero. And there's some k greater than 1 such that the kth derivative is non-zero, okay? But all the previous derivatives are zero, okay? So k is at least 2. If k is 2, this should just become the what? Second, zero is your test. second derivative test. If k is uh, greater than 2, then the second derivative test would be inconclusive, right? Because then, the, then that means f double prime c is zero. But you can still use this higher derivative test to figure out whether you have a local max or min or neither. So in fact, in this case, this test is always conclusive if you sort of find this case as that f to the kc is not zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, it could be inconclusive, but that would happen if if like you don't get in this situation. Okay, so if you have this, then all the cases are conclusive. Now we need to make four cases. And the sort of two parameters based on which we need to make the cases are whether the k is even or odd and whether the kth derivative value is negative or positive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so because the actual explanation is too tricky to do here, what I've done is I have written out, are these things here? Yes. I've, I have written out examples for each situation, sort of prototypical examples, which you can use to quickly figure out what's happening. These aren't proofs. What I'm going to explain are proofs or even the real reasons, but they are examples which help you quickly figure out. So even and negative. That means you need to differentiate an even number of times to hit a non-zero value derivative. And when you do reach that, that non-zero value derivative, it is negative. Okay, so some examples are so negative x squared. How many times do you need to differentiate that at zero to get a non-zero value? Twice twice and what's the value of that uh, non-zero derivative? Negative 2. Negative 2. So that fits this even and negative. You can similarly take negative x to the 4 or negative x to the 6, negative x to any positive even power. Okay? Mm -hmm. For example, if you take negative x to the 4, how many times do you need to differentiate it to get a non-zero valued uh, thing at 0? 4 times. 4 times and what's that value? 24 negative 24. Okay. Yeah, there's a negative. So, negative 24. Okay. And so you get even and negative. Okay, so let's make a picture. What does negative x squared look like? Well, it's sort of like x squared, but flipped around, so it looks like this. What would negative x to the 4 look like? Well, it would look pretty similar, right? It would maybe look like that. But basically, there's they're going to be these kind of concave uh, down. Is that the right word? Mm -hmm. Concave down things, and they're going to have this uh, local what max or min? max? Max. Okay, so that's good. So we got one case strict local max. Okay, what if you have even and positive? So what do what do I mean by even and positive here? You have to differentiate the even number of times to reach a non-zero number, mm -hmm. and that number is positive. Well, non-zero value at the point, mm -hmm. yeah, and that number is positive. So x squared or x to the two n, okay. And uh, what does the picture look like? Upward-facing parabola for x squared. There's a similar thing for x to the four. It will just be like a little steeper, right? Mm -hmm. And so these are concave up shapes. And they have what at the point? Local maximum. Mm -mm. Local minimum. Yeah. Strict local minimum. Okay. Good. So now let's go to odd and negative. So odd and negative, I have negative x cubed. Let's just check that it fits this, this uh, setup. So negative x cubed. How many times do you need to differentiate it to get a non-zero valued thing at c equals zero? Three times. Three times. And what's that value? Six. Negative 6. Negative 6, yeah. Okay, so it's odd and negative. What kind of picture do you get? Well, it looks something like this. Okay. Can you put the 
Mm, okay. Look a bit like this, right? And so, what do you expect? You get a uh, local max or min? Neither. Neither. Right? It'll be a uh, min from the left and a max from the right, etc. We don't want to go into the one-sided behavior right now, but it's neither. Okay. So that's what we have. Neither, and it decreases to the point. Okay. What is the final case we have? Odd and positive. What some examples for odd and positive? X cubed. X cubed. You could also take something bigger. What's a bigger exam? Bigger power here? X to the fifth. Fifth. X to the fifth. Let's look at X to the fifth. How many times you need to differentiate that to get a non-zero value at at c equals zero? Five. And what's the value of the fifth derivative? One hundred and twenty. That was some quick math there. Okay. So for these kinds of functions, what do the pictures look like? The what? The this. The same as this, except it's flipped. Yeah. Right, so you get. I want to say the mirror symmetry of that. Yeah, you can, the mirror image of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what kind of behavior is this? Increasing. So it's neither max nor min. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we have all our cases. So what do you notice overall? If you have the even position where it first becomes non-zero, then you do get a local extreme value, okay? And if if the first time it becomes non-zero is at an odd position, then you don't, get a you don't get a local extreme value. Okay, do you have some intuitive idea why this would be true? What's happening? Well, sorry, one way of doing the intuition is is that actually these examples are sort of sort of representative, okay? I don't want to say that very rigorously, but locally, if you look at any situation like this, it will sort of look like this. Okay, so these examples are actually sort of representative. So actually looking at these examples, it does give you the right picture, but there's sort of another way of thinking of it, which is based on actually constructing the one-sided version of this test, okay, which we'll do in a subsequent video. Now, I want to go back to the point I said about this being a generalization of the second derivative test. So can you just explain how the second derivative test is a special case of this? Oh, uh, well, if it is your second derivative, you differentiate even number of times. So if the second derivative is non-zero, mm -hmm. then you get in the a even case, streamer. even case, and then if it's negative, you get strict local max. If it's positive, you get strict local min. Mm -hmm. That's the usual second derivative test. Now, the usual second derivative test also says if the second derivative is zero, then we are inconclusive. Mm -hmm. But this one allows us to say, well, there's still hope. What's the hope if the second derivative is zero? You can go on differentiating. Go on differentiating and hope that at some point in the near future, you get a non-zero value derivative and then apply this. So actually, you can start out doing this test just as if you're doing the second derivative test. And if you get in the second derivative equals zero case, then you sort of switch your gears and move to this test. Okay. So you can start out with the second derivative test and then change to this if that fails. Okay. 